biggest animal in the world. They're also one of the smallest. We're talking about mosquitoes and the bloodborne diseases that they carry, including malaria. So for this case at Q&A, we are joined by Dr. Ian Cheeseman, the associate professor at Texas Biomedical Research. Doctor, appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, it's big news when we see malaria in Texas, also seen in Florida. Are you surprised that we're seeing it? Why or why not? This is not an enormous shock for us. It's It's been a very long time since we've seen um, an, uh, a locally acquired case of malaria in Texas, um, I believe around 30 years. But the conditions for, for malaria have been long existing in San Antonio. We used to have local transmission up until kind of the 1960s or so when malaria was eliminated here. Um, and we still have the mosquitoes that can carry and transmit malaria here throughout South Texas, the Anopheline mosquitoes. Um, and we have the conditions here which are quite conducive for spread, especially in the last um, few weeks where we've seen a very, very wet period followed by a very, very hot period, which is fantastic for both uh, mosquitoes to uh, grow and for diseases to, to develop within mosquitoes. Yeah, mosquitoes are alive and well in my own backyard. I know that very much, but put this into perspective for us. So is there a real reason for concern when we hear about this case in, in, out of Cameron County from somebody who has not traveled outside of the US? I think, the message is certainly do not panic. Sort of be aware, take the same precautions that you would be to, to prevent getting bitten by mosquitoes normally. Make sure that you're wearing kind of appropriate clothing, covering up as much as you can. Um, if you can stay inside during kind of dawn and dusk when mosquitoes are kind of most active, uh, wearing bug spray and, and all the things that we would normally kind of do to prevent uh, being bitten of the precautions that you would want to take anyway. The risk is exceptionally low. Um, in the last kind of 10 days or so, there's not been any uh, suggestion of a second case of malaria that is locally acquired in Cameron County or anywhere else in Texas. So, so I know at this point, the risk is quite low. Okay, great. So I, I know that you are a malaria expert. I mean, that's what you research. It's what you look at. It's what you study on a daily basis. Are there vaccines for malaria and are they effective? So there is one licensed vaccine that's out there, it's called RTSS. Um, it is not particularly effective. Um, where sort of vaccination for COVID um, reaches kind of 80, 90% um, efficacy. Uh, the vaccines against malaria in highly um, endemic countries where you're getting bitten by malarious mosquitoes potentially every day, um, the vaccine efficacy is much, much lower, um, potentially as low as kind of 20 to 40 percent, um, and um, lasts not a particularly long time either. But there is hope for kind of future vaccines. Uh, we do have an arsenal of drugs to treat malaria. Uh, one of the major threats we are seeing right now is the emergence and spread of drug resistance, particularly to a drug called artemisinin. Um, now, having said that, the case that we saw in Texas was uh, one malaria parasite species called Plasmodium vivax, which um, does not have uh, widespread drug resistance to artemisinin. So it's likely that treatment um, of um, symptoms would be very effective there. Uh, it is also a slightly unusual parasite. Um, it's unusual even within malaria parasites in that once the parasite invades the bloodstream, so uh, um, from a, um, the bite of malarious mosquito, it will travel to the liver where, where it will develop, and some parasites will burst out into the bloodstream and cause the symptoms that we know mm. of malaria. Fever, <laughs> headache, high temperature, um, kind of non-specific flu-like illnesses typically. Yeah, that can um, be symptoms for a lot of different things. So I'm sure it's hard to really kind of tell if that's the issue. And I, I know, too, that you have talked about how climate change and weather patterns have a role here in increasing cases of malaria. How so? So certainly we have, you know, as I 
mentioned earlier, the, the existing conditions here for malaria in San Antonio, and as we get kind of hotter and hotter periods, um, the, the disease can, can spread more effectively within mosquitoes, which means that transmission from one person to a mosquito uh, and from that mosquito to another person happens much more effectively. Um, so um, as we see kind of hotter periods, hotter and wetter periods start to become more normal, we will certainly see the, the potential for more spread of not just malaria, but other kind of vector-borne diseases, malaria, uh, sorry, mosquito-borne diseases, such um, such as West Nile and others. Yeah, chikungunya. Uh, so uh, I know you're in San Antonio. Texas Biomedical is in San Antonio. This is not unusual for San Antonio in its history. I mean, there's been massive malaria outbreaks in the city, like dating back to the 1930s, correct? Absolutely. So, so here used to be a little bit of a hot spot for invention of, of, of kind of malaria control methods. So back in the kind of early part of the last century, um, there was a there was a researcher called Chaz Chandler who um, pioneered using bats to control malaria, which is a very novel approach. And essentially, bats are natural predators of mosquitoes. They will go out and eat them. And he erected bat houses throughout the city and throughout a lot of South Texas uh, around kind of swampy areas where mosquitoes like to live and the mosquitoes would go out and eat, uh, sorry, the bats would go out and eat the mosquitoes and the theory was that that drive, drove down disease. Now it was also coupled with a lot of other technological improvements like the uh, uh, spread of air conditioning uh, and draining of swamps and those kind of things which were also really great ways of breaking transmission cycles for, for mosquito-borne diseases. But his efforts were, were sort of recognized by the Texas state, and he was nominated by the state of Texas for winning the Nobel Prize back in the 1930s. And yeah. I know that we, we all know improving drainage and you know emptying standing water, all those things in our own backyards are ways that we can help too if you don't have a bat house yeah. per se. But you know, the advent <laughs> of, of drainage and that kind of stuff isn't as cool as bats. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Ian Cheeseman. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Ian Cheeseman, Associate Professor at Texas Biomedical Research. I appreciate your time and your insight on this subject. Thank you so much for inviting me. We'll be right back. The Food and Drug Administration granting full approval to the Alzheimer's drug Lakembi. It's a landmark decision for the first medicine proven to slow the course of the memory robbing disease. Full approval prompts the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to change how it covers the drug, broadening access for up to a million people with early onset Alzheimer's. Lakembi got accelerated approval in January, but it hasn't been widely used because of an earlier coverage decision by CMS, which provides insurance for many elderly Alzheimer's patients through Medicare. President Joe Biden was in South Carolina this week pushing his economic policies, which have been dubbed Bidenomics. According to the White House officials, Enphase Energy is set to announce new investments in the state, which will create roughly 600 new jobs for South Carolina. President Biden also said to announce that U.S. companies have committed more than $500 billion for clean energy investments and manufacturing since he took office. Check out live cam right now, 84 degrees out there and still a lot of cloud cover. Some of those clouds have met rain, but yep. not especially widespread rain. Yeah, it's been pretty spotty. Unfortunately, not everybody tapped into the activity today, but we'll definitely take what little bit we can get, especially considering that those rain chances are going to drop off this weekend and into next week. But we're talking about that rain cool there, mid 80s right now. The high was only 91 here in San Antonio earlier this afternoon before we saw some more spotty showers work their way into Bear County. Again, a 20 percent chance tomorrow and then after that high pressure takes over and the heat is going to build. So we'll get you another full look at that forecast and those toasty temperatures coming up in a few.
Firefighters put in danger with a building threatening to collapse today when they battled a fire at JS Fine Wines on West Rhapsody. The boarded up windows and repairs that that building was going through made it difficult to control that fire, but they managed to put the flames out. A 71 year old man shot by his grandson and his friends when they were playing with a gun on Poyote Drive. The teens left the house before police arrived. The man was taken to Bamsey for medical support. Police are investigating that shooting. San Marcos fire investigators have arrested the prime suspect in a deadly 2018 apartment fire that killed five people, including one young man from San Antonio. Jacobe de Leon O'Shea Ferguson is now charged with arson, causing bodily injury or death, a first degree felony. All right, so we're pretty familiar with the fact that high means dry. Mm -hmm. So that means if we're going to get rain, we need to get it like now Next 24 36 hours Mia yep and we you know for the most part today I think those rain chances are starting to come down now that we're getting closer to sunset but tomorrow coverage is expected to be lower than today but we've got a 20 percent potential for an isolated shower or maybe a stray non-severe rumble of thunder to pop up before we head into the upcoming weekend and yes that high pressure system works its way into the state of Texas so speaking of which let's get you a look at our weather headlines the biggest things that we're monitoring as we gear up for the upcoming weekend so tomorrow yes an isolated shower possible and it's also going to be pretty warm because of that. Again, coverage not as high as today. So I think we're going to top off in the mid 90s tomorrow compared to the low 90s that we saw earlier this afternoon here in San Antonio. But that big blue H high pressure works its way into the state of Texas this weekend, which means those rain chances are knocked off the forecast and we see triple digits return as early as next week. So we'll talk all about that again, how we've been talking about the activity starting to come to an end, especially with those showers that were off to our southwest near Carrizo Springs as well as Eagle Pass. That is pretty much fizzled out. And then we had a few more showers, even a few lightning strikes there. Northern Edwards County working their way off to the southwest, now moving into northern Valverde County. Those are still trucking along a little bit, but now that we are nearing sunset, we're going to lose that daytime heat, which is a fuel for those showers to get up and running. I think we're going to see those fizzle out here over the next couple of hours. And then we're pretty much quiet through the overnight hours, but by wake up time tomorrow, it is possible that we find a few isolated showers out there. We'll continue that 20% potential into the afternoon as well. Most of us are likely going to miss out before the day is done, but still, We'll see what we can find and temperature wise mid to upper 70s yet again. First thing Friday morning with mostly cloudy skies. And then we'll see those temperatures climb into the upper 80s for any lunchtime plans approaching 90 degrees by 1 p.m. into the early afternoon. And then here come those mid 90s as we head into the later portions of your Friday afternoon. But today's rain chance brought to you by this area of low pressure off to our southeast near the Texas coastline that's going to move farther west as we head into the weekend. And then this high pressure system, which is in place over the New Mexico area, that's what's going to start working its way farther eastward here tomorrow and even into Saturday as well as Sunday. And that's going to be the main driver of our weather pattern going forward. So you can see what that's going to do to our afternoon temperature trend. We're in the mid 90s tomorrow, upper 90s return Saturday and Sunday, and then consecutive days where we have the opportunity to climb into the triple digits return next week as well. So enjoy this while we have it. 85 degrees right now here in San Antonio. Dew points are elevated in the low 70s. Remember, that's how we measure the moisture in the atmosphere. So it does still feel like the low 90s, but it is a little breezy. Winds out of the east southeast right now at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. You can see where we've seen some of that rain. Just by looking at our temperatures, 85 in Gonzales is 82 in Pleasanton, but way off to the west, Del Rio, who's actually been able to see some more sunshine today, checking in in the upper 90s, around 98 degrees. So we will start to see those temperatures return here to San Antonio, especially this weekend. And then, yes, triple digits into next week. So while it's not going to be for everybody, we'll cross our fingers and see if we can find a few more isolated showers into tomorrow, guys. That would be great. Thank you, Mia. The Buzz is up next.
To the buzz now at Facebook's parent company taking its biggest swipe at Twitter yet. This week, Meta officially launched its newest app called Threads. The app has many similarities to Twitter, including its layout and the product description. You've signed up, right? I have. I'm on. I haven't yeah. done it yet. The company says messages posted to threads will have a 500 character limit. The goal is to offer space for real time conversations online, potentially build a following and connect with like minded people. My first post was don't thread on me. Of course it was. Yeah. Very Texas. All right, it's time very, for Sriracha. Very you. Very, yeah. yeah. It's time for Sriracha lovers to find an alternative hot sauce as a shortage of the Asian goodness causing a major spike in pricing and not on. just online. This is our Sriracha. This isn't it. It's not it? No. Sacramento no. area businesses in California struggling to bring it in store with bottles being sold at $50. Although it probably would be very good in this scenario. Yeah. Hui Fong Foods, one of the largest producers of Sriracha, said the limited production is due to a shortage of raw material and they don't have an estimated time of when supply will increase. I've seen it going for $120 a bottle. I didn't realize anything of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, although there are no bull runs in Madrid, Spain's capital celebrated today the start of the famous bull running festival, San Fermín. The nine day celebration takes place every year in Pamplona, roughly 250 miles northeast of Madrid. Now, dozens of people, many of them hailing from the Navarre region, home of Pamplona, gathered in the capital to commemorate the start of this iconic Spanish tradition. The running of the bulls. Food looks good there, too. Yeah, we'll be right back. All right, low 80s across the board right now here in San Antonio. Of course, it is still muggy out there, so it feels a little bit warmer than that. We're going to start off our Friday around 76 by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Again, a 20% chance for an isolated shower to not completely out of the question before the week is done. Temperatures, though, a bit warmer tomorrow afternoon, climbing into the mid 90s. And then after that, here comes high pressure. And unfortunately, here come more triple digits into next week. So definitely going to be feeling the heat, guys. Yes, we will. Thank you, Mia. And thank you for watching the News at 6. See you back here on the Night Beat at 6.